Hello, everyone, and welcome to this evening's artist talk and conversation with Sefi De Salahi as part of the Mirrored Recollection exhibit currently taking place in Stamp Gallery. My name is Brittany Kaiser, and I'm the program coordinator for the Anwar Sadat Chair for Peace and Development here at the university. Uh, the Sadat Chair hosts um, a number of events on campus, including the Sadat Lecture for Peace, Sadat Forums, as well as the annual Sadat Art for Peace competition, um, for which we partner with the Department of Art. Um, the Stott Chair is proud to co-sponsor both of the artist talks that are associated with the Mirrored Recollection exhibit. And now some information on this evening's featured artist, Sefi Day Salahi. A multidisciplinary artist born in Tehran, Sefi Day left Iran to attend Academia de Belle Arti in Florence, Italy, where she received her MFA in visual art and multimedia. Sefi Day works in various media and utilizes different processes ranging from painting and drawing to printmaking, video art, and painting in motion. Her work has been shown at venues including, but not limited to, The Space for Advocacy in LA, Craft and Folk Art Museum in LA, Tribeca Video Art New York, Center for Contemporary Art Luigi Pecci, Virgilano Museum, and International Bologna Art Fair in Italy. By incorporating aspects of storytelling and letter writing, Sepi Day recollects the experiences she had growing up in post-1979 Iran. She weaves personal narrative and cultural history into her work, reflecting on the ways in which she and other women navigated the shifting social and political landscapes. She also explores the idea of home and longing that she felt after leaving Tehran. Ultimately, she uses her work to understand how her life was marked and shaped by these different events and to reflect on them more generally. Sepi Day currently lives and works between both Brooklyn and Washington, DC. Please join me in welcoming Sepi Day to the podium. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. It's an honor for me tonight being here. And first, I wanted to thank you, Alison Singer, Singer sorry. <laughs> Alison Singer, uh, for the amazing exhibition that you created and uh, your work. Uh, it was very great working with you. It was a great experience. Uh, you're passionate and very professional in your work. And I'd like to thank University of Maryland and the Stamp Gallery, and also many thanks to uh, the Amber Sadat Chair for Peace. Um, I'm going. Okay, I'm telling a little about my background that uh, I grew up, uh, I was born in Tehran, Iran, grew up in a very liberal family where love and being a good human uh, um, was a basic principles. And um, after I studied, I received my Bachelor of Art in Iran. I moved to Florence to uh, receive, and then I to get my um, uh, MFA in uh, visual art and med uh, multimedia in University of Academia Bellarti in Florence in Italy. Uh, I can say um, so much of uh, my inspiration in my work drive from my own life and uh, my life uh, as a child, my, my childhood was marked with uh, uh, unrest time of revolution, Islam, Islamic revolution, and eight years war between Iran and Iraq. Um, and as you can see me in this picture, is a, um, a very uh, happy child in this colorful dress that who uh, was living all the time in the fairy tale. But um, I can give you some example. Uh, happened Islamic revolution in Iran and our changed our life completely from today to tomorrow. It was like a shock. And uh, like a simple example, I was going in kindergarten in that time. And we were playing boys and girls together, learning, playing. And they came um, and they separated us. And they told us, boys are going to that room, girls are going to that room. And you don't have to talk and play to each other anymore. And the day after, they came and they told us, you have to cover your hair. You have to change your dress. And every day, we had the new things. So uh, as I can, I can say, as a child and as a woman, um, all these poli social political changes uh, affected my life. And 
influenced uh, all these events, influenced it in a different uh, and shaped it uh, until these days. And um, so, and now we are going, um, these are some works that they are self portrait of me. And uh, as you can see, uh, I am in this state. These are uh, many years after those events. I was going to university. It's a photo-based, a mixed media image. And uh, you can see me floating between sky and earth and surrounded by these uh, contradictions and try to find a way to uh, to deal with all these different issues. So what I do in my art also, I try to understand these different layers of my identity and how these events shape and influence my life until these days. And eventually, uh, when I left Iran, I had uh, the experience of separation from my family, and uh, that uh, took me to the sense of belonging and uprooting after that. Uh, utilizing language and text uh, is one way I found my imagery. Uh, for making these works, I make uh, Persian calligraphy. And practically, uh, I choose a, I select a word, I choose a word, and then I write it down the word over and over in a very repetitive and meditative way. And um, in these kind of works, uh, there is always the slippage between you can see the language as a pure form or as a pure line, or you can see the language uh, as something carries meaning with it. That, that meaning it is very sometimes very literal and very readable. And these works there are from my series that uh, titled War and Peace, and there are uh, my memories from the time of the revolution and um, is, uh, and uh, Islamic revolution and war and um, they are in a series and in the way of a storytelling. This work is uh, around the, is about the time of the war and uh, there is a the name the word Gisha that was the name of the street. Uh, the one of the street that it was a birthday party bombing that was kids birthday, pa ba birthday party pa bombing and that uh, hearing that it was in Tehran also hearing that as a child affected me strongly and um, the other this is the last work from this series and uh, titled Peace or Soul in Farsi and um, practically symbolize the end of the war, this work. And I always, uh, the technique, the style is the same, writing and repeating. Um, as you can see in this work, there is always writing and repeating. And in this writing and repeating comings, there are, these are not beautiful memories, but these writing and repeating is the styles coming from my happy memory witnessing my parents when they were on the phone, talking on the phone. There, is, there were always a piece of paper and pen there that they were talking on the phone and writing and in a very meditative uh, manner. And the other, this is a school series that I'm going to show you. As a child in Iran, after the revolution um, happened, I witnessed a lot, lot of changes. And uh, you no longer uh, allowed to do some very simplest things. And for example, also in the school, it was uh, very hard. And our, our daily life also in the school. For example, in the school, we should cover, yes, our hair. And we should cover our chin. That I don't know why we should cover our chin. And this is the, the word uh, chin that is chune band uh, I used in Farsi. And we couldn't wear the colorful uh, socks. It, we couldn't paint our nails. And we couldn't use Walkman. This is the word Walkman. I repeat that over and over. Um, 
And the most important, uh, the mo most important changes in my work happened while I was studying in Florence. Uh, living in Florence, surrounded by all the, uh, in the capital of, um, sorry, I was living in Florence. Um, what I was saying. Okay, the most important changes in my life happened while I was living in Florence, and uh, Florence, the capital of uh, Re Renaissance, and surrounded by all the culture and the beauty of art and the sculpture, uh, made me think and led, led me uh, reflect more in my work, in my art, and um, made me want uh, made me nostalgic about my family, my culture, and all the belongings that I uh, had left in Iran, and made me want to work with the subjects that uh, are related to my country. And one of those su subjects that I began to work is uh, veil, uh, or uh, the chador in Farsi, that is a black, black um, fabric that uh, the woman, they have to cover themselves, their hair or body. And uh, this is the one video uh, and in subject of the veil, I used the subject of veil and I experimented in different ways and different material and different medium. This is one video that I'm going to show you, titled Chador.
And in this video, I covered the camera with the transparent veil uh, to investigate difference between public and private life of a woman, or inside, outside, and uh, questioning all the uh, things about the women and identity. <clears throat> uh, these are series of works that they are not series, but they are, uh, looks like each other, the same concept. The first work is Diario or uh, Diary, it, uh, Diary in Italian, Diary. And this work is, um, uh, for making this work, I was not only used the black fabric uh, from a veil, but also I used a Japanese paper and also household material like che uh, cheesecloth and uh, baking sheets. And I see in this kind of work uh, the surface of a paper as a skin, and for and I make my form shapes uh, through using domestic material, and those domestic material are cheese grater, fork, string, needles, and tracing wheel. There is also ink and hair in these works, and um, I see the. F um, in this work, there are many layers, layers over each other, and uh, I'm looking always in this kind of work for the hidden identity. And this work also is, uh, the name is Diario, but, diar uh, but is a uh, Diario Nero, it's a black diary, and uh, it made all with the black fabric of the veil, and uh, is the same concept about the uh, uh, layering and uh, concept of the identity and uh, body of women. And this work that there is also in the mirror collection uh, shows right now, and uh, black uh, fabric you can see also here. In this work, I investigate the relationship between men and women. Now I'm going to my memory series. Uh, for creating this, okay, I'm going back here. For going, for creating these abstract works, I uh, use a traditional Muslim prayer stone or more in Farsi. Prayer stone or more is a small piece of clay that has a etched image on it, and uh, is a, like a, the form of tablet. And the Muslims they, they use it for uh, daily prayers. And uh, I borrowed the etched image, and through the act of rubbing, repeating, erasing, and ripping, uh, I tr transfigure the element of language to visual rhythm in the way that revealing uh, this pattern, that always there is a, in this, the pattern, there is always a purpose or there is a meaning. And uh, I, working with prayer stone and this kind of work, uh, really interested to me uh, because first um, uh, using prayer store uh, itself is interested to me because uh, the ritualistic aspect of it and uh, the, and those ritualistic uh, they are rubbing mostly and uh, repeating and the other reason is that the prayer stone or more you can find in every household in Iran. So for me personally, it holds lots of um, nostalgia also. And, uh, and the other things, the third things, um, this kind of work, the way I work and uh, I rub and then uh, I cut them in small pieces and I put all these collage together, uh, remind me of Iranian tile and uh, Islamic architecture in Iran. Um, and that it's uh, this kind of work also for me is a homage to ancient architecture in Iran and uh, all those things that I was surrounded while I was living in Iran. This is also memories one, <clears throat> the same technique using more portrait. And here, this series uh, called Memories 2. Um, I started the, this technique 
uh, using the of robbing and using prayer stone in 2006, and uh, I continue through the years the same technique. And in my memories too, uh, this time I decided to look at outside event and uh, as a way to inspire me. And these works are my response to the violent event that happened in uh, summer of 2009 in Tehran, in Iran. And uh, during, uh, I can say about that event uh, in 2009. During the contested Iranian elections that brought large scale protest and violent confrontation to the city street in Iran. Um, okay. Before uh, before this event of 2009, uh, my work was mostly personal about my experience and about my memories. But the 2009 post-election fallout and other events around that time uh, inspired my work in many ways. And one of those the, um, ways was uh, I started recreating photo-based image. And these images was the image that uh, I was finding in social media from the very from those very disturbing and violent events that was happening in 2009. And uh, these are the women series. That these are confrontation between Iranian police and women in the street. And always they are photo based. And uh, to investigate this subject, I retired my former style of letter writing and replaced it with photo-based uh, photo imagery. And here is a stop, uh, uh, stop, it's not a stop motion, it's an animation that I made and I recreated from an event that occurred during that, uh, that, uh, during that, those days in Iran. And this is another animation. And these animations, uh, uh, in this animation, the story based on archival video reading, recording from social media posting in Iran. And I developed my uh, personal style of true fusion between the fixity of painting and dynamism of a video. After experimenting with photo-based uh, media on 
uh, social problems and identity, I decided to merge my three different styles that was more portrayed, letter writing and uh, photography together. And I created this series that titled um, More Portrait. And practically, there are, I photographed uh, the Iranian women that they are my friends and family. And in this picture, they hide or cover their, their faces in a way or another. And what I do in this kind of, in this collection, I explore the relationship between inner female and outside world in the form of critique of the way in which women are presented in a society. And some of these works are in the show. When I first started as an artist, my work uh, was very autobiographical and deeply personal. But the event of 2009 uh, and my exposure to other artists um, helped me to think more in a collective manner. And this has a huge impact in my work. Uh, now I'm going to show you the video that I, it's a collaboration uh, between me and my husband, Kamran Tairi Mogadam, that who is also an artist and filmmaker. Um, and the video is, the, the, the title of the video is Strapa. It means uh, to reap or tearing.
this was the end of the talk and please if you have any question not intentionally. It's yeah. Right. And then I had another question. Can you go all the way back up to the original um, early portraits that you did? The works? Yeah. Here? So we had kind of talked about those a little bit um, yeah. in your studio in terms of, I think, the mustaches. Like, yes. Um, do you want to speak at all to just sort of the playful element or what you were thinking of? Uh, yes, because uh, it's a dreamy work, as also you said. And with me uh, surrounded by all these different things, and mustache, yes, is uh, the symbol of the men, <laughs> that they rule everything. <laughs> that was one of the things. And they are also prayer stones. And this is me uh, wearing the veil and to just to understand what's happening around me and yeah that's all yeah and i enjoyed making these works <laughs> they are playful yes so um with your video works yeah you will bring in a kind of audio like music from other people I've noticed. I'm just wondering if you could talk about like how you choose the audio that will accompany an animation or a video. Strava's obviously, it's incorporated kind of or baked into it, but. Okay, I didn't things. understand very well your question. Oh. It was so, about just a Strapa or it um, was? In so yeah, for the, the non-Strapa pieces, um, how do you decide what audio, like what music or how, like. How, how, oh, how I decided about the audio. Uh -huh. That is a good question. <laughs> you know, when you, in, in the animations, uh, one of them just had the idea. And uh, while I was, because that is frame by, there are hundreds of drawings, and frame by frame, there are still frames that I painted on it. And working on that every day, I just, I was thinking and uh, working and thinking also about the sound. If should I put the sound, what kind of sound? And then at the end, uh, I just, uh, I was thinking, sometimes you see something, sometimes you hear something that you can connect you to that uh, sound. But this sound is also made by one of my friends that I ask her, I, I just explain her the feelings of the video. And she came with come some, of idea, some ideas then he chose this one. And also with video Chador, I had the, I had the sound in my mind. I knew that what I want to do, and then the video came and I edited based off that. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like baked in from the start? Like, or like yes, sometimes, yeah. Oh. Sometimes yeah. Uh, from the start, sometimes yeah, it takes time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, can, I think you can tell, I think, um, yeah. that, that you have like, this and like so, many, so much of your work's rhythmic visually, so. Yeah, like, sound so. is very important <laughs> for me, yeah. Yes? I'm um, sorry if I already mentioned this, but um, what about the year 2009 specifically marked the change in the style of your work? Uh, it was... This works, and that was a time um, I was in the United States, and these events was happening in Iran, and I couldn't travel in Iran, and uh, I was seeing all these images on social media, and they are all they were all real events with real people in it, uh, so it was also uh, that feeling that I wanted to do something.
you know. And I was thinking as an artist, uh, I can use this image and work on it and also put my interpretation on it. And uh, first I worked on just photos, pictures, and then I found videos. So I was thinking with video, uh, is it still easier to work? It was lots of work, but I was thinking, is it still easier to show videos in different places? You can put it online and it's easier to, and I liked, I wanted the minimum things that I could do to share these events that's happening. And then I was thinking the video is the, the best. I don't know if I answered your question or not. Ah, uh, because I talked about the events. I don't want to say something wrong, but um, it happened in 2009, the election, Iranian election. And then um, that was aftermath of the election. And it was uh, lots of violent things happened and uh, lots of pro protests and confrontation, violent confrontation in the street, lots of people died or in the prison or, yes. And was this the first one? Uh, these are, yeah, also I was working in series and these are a couple of this uh, image that I selected. These are confrontation between police and Iranian women. Uh, and the videos, especially uh, this one, the yellow door, uh, this is the real story that happened that during those events after election. Yes? The animations and the pieces around this time were these really bright colors and they're really vibrant. Yes. Um, Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, the, one of the things that I, same, I was thinking about it a lot, because uh, also when I was working in Italy, my work was uh, my work was mostly black and white. Right now, so there is not much of color. But in 2009, I was I moved in, in United States in 2008, and I think I was also influenced a lot by color and pop art and. Uh, Yes, that was the only time that I used color in my work. That is the only reason that I can think about. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are many of them, but not also specific. Uh, the first one was Louis Bourgeois, and then Shirin Neshat, you know Shirin Neshat, and uh, Eva Hess, Nancy Sparrow, yes. Uh, and also Italian uh, artist, John Nascoino, uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you all for coming, and I hope that you all can find your way home on a cold night. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.